It's time again for the Fish Face Off series. If you're new to this series, once a month, I take a look at two common fish choices and compare them on seven different attributes. After the video, I'll put up a poll on the following Monday where you can vote for your choice. The first two episodes of this series focused on live bears, so we're gonna change it up today and focus on cichlids from two of the African rift lakes. So let's go ahead and compare the cichlids from Lake Tanganyika and Lake Malawi. So for the purposes of our discussion today, we're gonna to talk about the commonly available Hapanambuna species from Lake Malawi and the common Lake Tanganyikan species like Shell Dwellers, Cyprochromis, and Trophius. In terms of keeping these fish together, it's a generally frowned upon practice to keep fish together from different African rift lakes in the same tank. So let's start out talking about appearance. The Malawi cichlids are generally considered to be the more colorful of the group, coming in a wide variety of colors. You can basically find any color in the rainbow. However, I will say there are some Lake Tanganyikan fish that also have some great colors, like many of your Cyprochromus and Trophia species, which I feel rival anything that you can find in Lake Malawi. You'll need to recognize that for a lot of these species, the males are the fish that possess all of the colors, while the females are most often a gray or silver drab color. In comparing these two groups of fish on appearance, I really do think it comes down to personal preference. A lot of the Lake Tanganyikan fish are really underrated when you're comparing them with the fish from Lake Malawi. In terms of availability, Lake Malawi cichlids can be found at your local big box stores, local fish stores, local club auctions, and pretty much anywhere else. Though you'll have to be careful when buying Lake Malawi fish from the mixed African cichlid tanks at your big box stores, since you'll run the risk of either getting a hybrid or one of the more extremely aggressive Mbuna species like the Aratus. Finding Lake Tanganyikan fish can be a little bit more challenging, though I've seen them at some local fish stores and through the local aquarium clubs, swaps, and online. This is one category where I'd give the slight edge to the fish from Lake Malawi. When talking about pricing, I'm gonna use my experience and my local club auctions to compare the two species, since that's a place where both of them are sold in pretty significant numbers. I found that the Lake Malawi cichlids are generally a little bit less expensive than the fish from Lake Tanganyika. At least in my area, there seems to be more of a supply of people providing Lake Malawi fish than people breeding the fish from Lake Tanganyika. I would take this with a grain of salt though, because pricing could vary from place to place around the country. Both of these fish have pretty similar care requirements. The one main aspect is they both prefer harder water. While I'll cover aggression later on in the video, you will need to keep in mind the temperament from fish from either of these two lakes and planning for their care requirements. Other than the higher hardness levels, both species require tropical temperatures and will readily take a wide variety of foods. Minus managing the aggression levels, fish from both of these lakes are pretty hardy and easy to take care of. When looking at any fish, you should consider its lifespan along with its care requirements. Both of these species have an average range of about five to 10 years, which is dependent on the species. There wasn't really any clear difference when you averaged out the species from Lake Malawi or Lake Tanganyika. Not surprising, both these fish seem to live about the same length of time. When looking at either one of these two groups of fish, one of the major things to take into account is temperament. There are some species from Lake Malawi that are known to be absolute tank busters, like the bumblebee cichlid. However, you can find many other Lake Malawi species that are much less aggressive and don't really cause problems in your tank. For species from either lake, you can use a couple of strategies to mitigate aggression, like line of sight blocks and overstocking. I've found that the Lake Tanganyikan cichlids that I've kept tend to be a little bit calmer, but with that being said, shell dwellers and trophies still can be pretty aggressive. One place where you can give Lake Tanganyikan cichlids credit is their personality. I don't know a single person who doesn't enjoy watching the shell dwellers interact with one another and rearranging their tank. The bottom line here is that no matter which lake you're looking at, you definitely need to do your research to make sure you can manage the aggression level of the fish that you're interested in. When it comes to breeding, both these species are fairly easy to breed. Most of these species are either maternal mouth brooders or lay their eggs either in shells or rock work. I find that sexing these fish is easy to moderate depending on the species, with many showing sexual dimorphism. With the species that I've worked with, I've not really run into any difficulties with breeding any of them, but depending on the species, you may need to move the fry to a separate rearing tank 
to avoid predation by the parents or other fish in the tank. No matter which lake you choose, I think these fish are great breeding projects for your beginning fish breeder. Now that we've looked at all the attributes, let's talk about whether there's a clear winner. If you purely did this by points, the Lake Malawi cichlids would win based on their wide variety of colors, price point, and availability. Even though they're harder to find, I do think Lake Tanganyikan cichlids have beautiful colors of their own and have great personalities that rival any Lake Malawi cichlid. I keep fish from both of these lakes in my fish room, and I really don't think you can go wrong with either lake as long as you do the proper research and provide the proper care level for that fish. So with that being said, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll see you on the next video.